Welcome to another episode of the Monday Mindset. It's just another normal episode. Nothing special nah, about today. Nah, nothing at all. It's episode 30, <laughs> baby. Come on. Mason's going to hate us for that, but I'm pumped up. That's right. Episode 30. End of season two? End of season two. That's right. Season two, episode 10. Episode 30 as a whole. That's right. Unbelievable. That's right. Where today we are finishing up our season where we have been all about celebrating the day because every day is a gift. Mm. And we're going to make the most of it. The Monday Mindset is a conversation that offers reflection, encouragement, and next steps to kickstart your week. And to celebrate, no cookie tasting. Nah. I'm going to try one of these today see if i like them any more than what i used to i think i hate them milk chocolate english toffee bar but let's get a little oh, a little perrier i, I don't know how you say it perrier 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 i don't know you like seltzer water love it mm. i'm curious I drink it every i'm curious day. those who every day who are watching if you would comment let us know if you like seltzer water or not because if not, something's wrong with you. No, they would probably say, I don't understand how you drink it. And I would agree. But over time, man, love it. My sister hates it. Yes. She I got I it because it. I hyped it up. And she was like, this is the worst thing I've ever Yeah, that's mouth. what everybody says. And she's like, you don't really like this, do you? And I was like, no, yeah. I really do. Love it. It's like the pop for me, mm -hmm. but without any of the sweetener. Have, you, the have you ever like squeezed a fresh lemon and a fresh lime in it? I don't think I have. Game changing. I believe it. I do believe it. Homemade Sprite. Yes, I can see that. Nature Sprite. With no sugar. Nature. Nothing bad in it, man. So to celebrate for episode 30, we just got a few little snacks here. We got our seltzer water, but we want to offer you with an incredible opportunity to be a, be a part of our first ever giveaway. giveaway. That's right. So go ahead, make some comments below in Facebook, YouTube. I don't know how in the world they would do it with a um, podcast, with a podcast, but Hey, just, just email in at, uh, I don't even know what the email would be. Hey, a Rayburn at betterlife.church. That's right. Send me that email That's right. and uh, we'll get you in for the drawing for a free giveaway. That's right. Man, who knows? Maybe some merch by then. I don't know. Uh-oh. Maybe Don't be teasing him. Don't Maybe be teasing him. I don't know. Come on, Mason. Make our dreams come true. So I'm not going to lie. He doesn't know this yet, but I'm working on a little project for Aaron. I'll say that. Yes. I'm working on a little something for Aaron. Yes. So. Be revealed on another episode of Monday Mindset. Season three, episode Season one. three. Oh, don't tease me. Come on. I'm excited. I'm telling you. Let's go. I'm telling you. Let's go. All right. So to kick things off, let's try the horrible Heath bars that Brandon it's say are awesome. It's horrible. Oh, crunchy, dude. Yeah, they're crunchy. Well, like break your teeth. Hell yeah. Dude. You don't like that. Not really. Not really. There's nothing really special in the toffee. Now, the other options here you gave me, pretty rock solid. I'm going to treat myself. A little cookies and cream. Okay. Hershey's chocolate. We got to reveal what our top one is, too. Top one? Yeah. All right, you already know. What do you think my top one is? Probably the uh, M&M's. Bingo. Numero. You know. My favorite. Bob mm. Bar. What's yours? My number one? Butterfinger. I'm wrong. Twix? You don't know. Oh, no, I'm about to make a hard call. It's one of these three. It's one of those three. What do you think? I would honestly probably say, as a whole, probably peanut M&Ms as well. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. They're Love great it. Great with pop. Love it. Oh, yeah. Emily got they a don't big melt. Like, mixed bag. Had the old, the classic, the peanut butter and the peanuts. I was like, Emily, just get the peanuts next time. Let's just be done with it. <laughs> Let's be done. No with reason it. to search for the peanuts. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's what I do. So, man, we have got to do 30 episodes together, or this is episode 30. And I just, we always want to celebrate these milestones. If we aren't celebrating milestones, then, man, I just think we're, we're missing out on opportunity to just really spark joy in our life. And really, we've been talking about. Man, celebrating each and every day. Yeah. Because every day is a gift. That's been this whole series focus. We've been looking at at 
what we would now call values each week mm -hmm. that we can apply every single day to kickstart our weeks. Yeah. Um, I think it's important, man, just to celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. We criticize so much. We never celebrate. Yes. And man, take a moment, even in your car right now, celebrate a little bit. Come on. Man, if you're on the road, honk your horn a little bit. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Do you imagine? Yes. Light it up. Light it up. I mean, you're talking, you all have joined us for 30 episodes now, or maybe you're just now hopping in. But we hope that we have every week got to connect with you, that you have got to see our real sides. You've got to come to know us a little bit better. But understand that we're just on this journey, too, of just applying these truths to our lives yep. and, and really just focusing in on making every day something special. So Man. thanks for joining Love us. It. And once again, sign up for that giveaway. Make a comment below. That's right. Best is yet to come. Send that email. That's right. Best is yet to come. Especially once that merch, merch drops. Right, Mason? Right, Mason? Let's Monday go. Mindset, merch, a oh. little Disney. Disney's Man, I, I, next I'm level. I'm still naming it and claiming it. Disney? Eventually. Disney. Eventually. Come on. If anyone has any free Disney points that they would like to send us to Disney, Monday Mindset, if you have any extra points, I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. Any, you never know. Any just free miles on your airplane. You never know. You never know. We just talked last week about being generous. I know. So. Man. Be generous. If you, have, if you haven't Monday watched Mindset. it, or maybe you have watched it, you get to be generous. <laughs> Go back and check it out. <laughs> but no, like, I mean, I'm just, I, so what brought that up? I, I'm on a side tangent. There's a guy that I watch, his vlogs, and people give him free trips all the time to Disney. No. Yeah. They're like, hey, our points are expiring. We're not going to use them. Would you like them? I'll like them. I'll take them. Like, wait. How do you sign up for that? I know. <laughs> I'm like, geez. So instead of that, we just announced it over the podcast. Hey. And um, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe. That'd be incredible. That would be unbelievable. Have to take Mason with us. Name it, too. claim it. I know. Oh, be incredible. So, man, today we're going to bring the, se the season to an end by talking about our values. And really, that's what we've done. Over the past 10 weeks, we have really just dove in to values. And values are things that you believe are important in the way you live and the way that you work. So some of the values that we've talked about, we kick things off with our attitude. Then we went to our priorities, our health, family, thinking, commitment, faith, relationships, and generosity. Now, those are just a, just a few values. Yeah. I gave Brandon a sheet here. Look at that. It's unbelievable. This is a whole list of values. There's over a hundred values here, like joy, dependability, determination, loyalty, tolerance, stability, strength, self-control, selflessness, goodness, hey, generosity, calmness. Yeah. We can see, man, there are so many values that have been, that are just, I think are just ingrained in who you are. Yeah. And really, when we talk about to, to be the person that you desire to be, it really comes down to living out the values that you want to put first in your life. And so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have some fun. Brandon, we go. we've got to talk about 10 values. I don't think we resonate with all the values that we've talked about, mm -hmm. but maybe we can pinpoint some values in our life that maybe we don't know existed, or maybe we're hopefully even get to the root of like nailing down three or five, three to five core values that we have in our life. And the great news is the whole process that we're going to go through together, just think in your mind as we go through these questions, what they would be. And by the end of these five questions, I believe that you also will have your values outlined for your life, for you to live them out every single day. Mm -hmm. You ready to kick things off? I'm ready. All right, a little Let's different, a little yeah. different today. Yeah. This is going to be a little back and forth, talking about values. Let's see where they land, right. okay? Here we go. Looking back on your life, describe a mountaintop experience. This is a moment when you felt the most joyful, exuberant, and on top of the world. What were you doing? <laughs> Who were you with? And how did you get to this point? Oh, man. Let's see. Man, that's tough. Oh, that's tough. I'm going to go, um, it does involve Disney. I'm going to go, <laughs> it, it was a, it, it does, it does. I'm going to go, uh, it was me and my wife and then my whole family. Like 
my mom, dad, my sisters, their husbands, and all their kids, we all got to go on a cruise together. And it was like the, it was like a true, like a full family vacation and it was paid for. Come so, on. I mean, it was the Let's top go. of the world right there. But yeah, I mean, it, it was. George like, Sr. took care of that one, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was taken care of. George, uh, think of the Rayburns next time. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it, it was awesome. So it was great. That's pretty good. Yeah, That's pretty I mean, good. All right. Mountaintop experience for me, thinking through this. I'm not going to lie. This is still, um, this is still pretty special for me. I can still remember the day that I called Adam Eldridge about this position Yeah, as the campus pastor in Grayson. Yeah. And over a five-week course, it was just continually just saying, God, whatever you're doing, um, me and Emily, we're just going to be faithful. And if that was us to remain in the positions that we were, we were fine with it. But we just felt like God needed, or God was calling us to step out in faith a little bit. And we made a phone call, had lots of conversations, got to see you here one day. I was yeah. like, oh, Brenda Sparks, what's up? And uh, who would have thought? There. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to change my mind. <laughs> and I can remember that moment sitting down, uh, Trace Hermanos. I can remember, I think right before actually going to the, um, going to the mill, I looked up the values of Bear Life Church. And I was mm. like, oh, yeah, I, I resonate with that. Uh, but it was, a, it was a total whim. I mean, really, it was meeting your father-in-law mm -hmm. at a summer basketball camp. And I yep. said, hey, what are they doing with the campus pastor position? And he said, I don't know, but I can find out and I can give you a number. About three weeks went by. I hadn't thought about it much. Just was waiting. And he comes up to me at another summer ball camp and say, hey, I got that number for you. His name's Adam Eldridge. I was like, oh, snap, this is crazy. But I can remember that the first day um, actually getting hired on and really getting to this point to where it was like we had walked out, we had taken a step of faith, we had seen doors open, and we didn't understand where this was going. We had so many questions still. We still got so many questions, it seems like, of how to even do this job. Yeah. Um, but I still remember like that first day of work. And the first week oh, I remember, work. I remember, remember the first, first day, day. Work. we went kayaking. Yeah, it was incredible. We were kayaking, but hanging out with the what team for the first time, the first yeah. week, and still to this day, it's like it's still like a mountaintop experience. That yeah. I get to do what I do. Well, I, I remember too. Like it was such a cool moment because like I knew you. We had played golf together. We had mm -hmm. talked some. I didn't really know you know you. And that first day, like I was like, I remember going home and being like, man, Aaron's the guy. Like, honestly, yeah, like, not, like, that's, I, I really do. And yeah. um, so that's awesome, man. I can remember that, though. That, like, who was, I mean, what were we doing? I mean, all throughout that process, just taking steps of faith, who are you with, getting to meet new people, getting to just be involved in what a church was doing and, and was wanting to do in the city in which I lived. And I was just like, yeah. This, and, I mean, still this day, it's like, it's just incredible I get to do this. That's awesome. So, man, all right. Made my answer look awful. That's great. Going, no, <laughs> we're seeing it, though. We're seeing it. We'll get down to it. So that's just one. All right, number two. Imagine yourself at your 90th birthday. What do you want to be remembered for? What will you look back on and think, yes, that was worth it? Um, I just want, I want to leave a positive impact on people. Um, I want people to look back and see um, that I was obedient to God's calling. Um, and that through that, I was able to, um, to help people experience a better life, mm -hmm. help people experience Jesus and make a lifelong, uh, changing them. I can just leave a positive impact on them. Yeah. Yeah. Do you mind goes straight to my kids? Mm. 90th birthday. What do you want to be remembered for? I may cry, but, um, I want to teach my kids what it means to fall in love with Jesus. Mm. and let that be the thing that they remember me for, that loved unconditionally, that was always there for them, and share with them the greatest and most important thing about my life, and that's Jesus. It made me cry. I think it would be incredible. Nine years old to all six of my kids. Six. Your number out now. Dude, dude, Papa Craig. Everybody knows I love Craig Rochelle. Yeah. He's got six kids, man. So you said six. I just want to be like Craig. <laughs> I was just like... If Craig Rochelle, like, how can Craig Rochelle have six kids? How is that possible? But okay. hey, name it and claim it. I just got a lot. I got a lot of love to give. Yeah, a lot of love to give. Six kids. And whenever we think about the idea of like, I've got two right now, and are we done? 
dude, I just can't be. I can't yeah. be done. Yeah. Like, I got to continue to make this world a better place. And just the more Rayburns that we have in it, <laughs> the better, it the gets. better, man. The better. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but can you imagine six kids? We are then elevating ourselves. You to have like a, a full basketball team with a sub. Hundred percent. Which one are you going to bench? <laughs> <Can you> <laughs> oh man, that's tough. Whoever's the worst. <laughs> oh no. Uh, but no, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, but I imagine myself at 90 years old, what I imagine is my kids around me. Yeah. And that's what I hope and pray happens the most is that the kids, my kids will, our relationships, I know will have ups and downs, yeah. but we'll still remain a family. You know what yeah. I mean? But makes me think of my mama, yeah. 93. Yeah. How many kids? Nine. Nine. Yeah. I'm talking six, man. She had nine. That's nothing. Yeah. Crazy. Nothing. I don't know, man. But she still does her own garden and everything, man. I believe it. Dude, Unbelievable. That's the way to go. I know. <sighs> love it. Love it. All right. If you were to unexpectedly inherit hundred or fifty million dollars, how would you spend the money? What would you do with your time if you no longer needed to work to earn money? This is kind of connected on the last episode. A little yeah, it bit. is. Yeah, it is. Um, man, like I said, tithe first, and then. Um, take care of my family and pay off debt and then also give to like um, the churches around and yeah. also hospitals and any, anything I'm <laughs> super passionate about that. Um, like I said, with the time, um, <laughs> take some time with the fam <laughs> and my wife. Uh, but then also um, I do love like going around to different hospitals and yeah. uh, children's hospitals, things like that. And so I, I would do a lot of that. Yeah. I would, I would love that. Absolutely, man. I'm right there with you. I think just try to be as generous as possible with that money. Um, probably give a lot of it away, probably invest some of it too. I think I would probably like to get my family to where they're financially stable for a generation. I think that would be cool. Uh, what would yeah. you do with your time if you no longer needed to work to earn money? Dude, if I could do that, I would just I live a great big money. adventure. Yeah. And it would just be consistently, but it would still be out of service. I just cannot imagine, like, I understand trips in general, like, sure, take them, go do them. Uh, but I still just like, that doesn't bring me meaning or purpose, just going and traveling. You. you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. There has to be somebody involved in the process, yeah. I think. But I can see me and Emily just just traveling, be it living a big adventure and just trying to trying to find value in other people through the travels yeah, and maybe see, so one of mine is like with traveling is vlogging yeah because like like legit like yeah. i've had some like vloggers like actually impact my life yeah uh, isn't that so, crazy yeah so for me like I, I would love to be able to do that as well all right number four go. so like that's a good one kind of gets this thing number four who are two people who are the two people in your life that you most admire what qualities do you see in them that you aspire to I'm gonna go with mom and dad. Oh no! Hey, yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's pretty evident what Brandon's number one value is. <laughs> yeah. I think we're pretty much yeah. there. Yeah, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my mom mm-hmm. and dad and just seeing like how mm-hmm. how they're wired differently, but also just being there, seeing the highs and the lows, mm-hmm. um, and seeing um, what they've gone through, but also just seeing their faithfulness and obedience to God through it all. Uh, through the hard times, because a lot of times, um, being honest from the outside looking in, a lot of people um, are like, oh man, like I, I've heard this comment multiple times from multiple people. I just want to be in the Sparks family. I want to be like the Sparks family. Mm. And they just see the highlights. They see mm-hmm. the highlight reel. Uh, but uh, being their son, <laughs> I see the highs and the lows. Oh, yeah. uh, but just seeing um, their obedience, seeing their work ethic, seeing their faithfulness and their love. And um, man, there's not one of us kids or grandkids that um, go to bed uh, not knowing that we're loved. We know how much we're loved by them. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty wild. And yeah. uh, so just, I just admire uh, them, look up to them, uh, want to be like them. Yeah. And so, yeah. That's beautiful. I love that, man. Love that. You know, the one person that came to mind was my mamaw Webb. Uh, she has always just, she's got, you know, she had three kids, two, un- I got two uncles and my mom. And, but she was always just like one of those, she just did whatever she needed to for her family. Yeah. And she worked the sewing factory. If they needed more money, she'd do that. But what I love most about my mamaw, man, I got to spend a lot of time with her. 
I can never, ever remember her like busting my butt or even really even raising her voice at me. I think, and it's not that I deserved it a lot, but her soul, even still to this day, is just so pure and so loving and just like genuinely caring. And we've had highs and lows like throughout our family, but yet her love is just continued. Yeah. And no matter what, I don't know, I just think like her demeanor and the love that she gives all of her family is just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. So I love that. And yeah, I would probably say the other person I admire, and it just continues to grow the older, the older I get, and you kind of get to see some of the sacrifices that particularly that he's made. But I'm, I'm kind of with you with my father. Uh, my dad's been in ministry since he was 18. Mm. He's lasted. Yeah. He's still pastoring to this day, the yeah. same church that he started at. Wow. He's had a longevity in it, even being bivocational, you know, Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, Sunday mornings, all that he's basically owned throughout the time wow. that he's um, that he's worked. And there was a lot of times, I mean, he made a lot of sacrifices, even from the family standpoint. He worked second shift with his job. Mm-hmm. And you just kind of see all that, man. It just took, I know it was hard, and I know it was difficult, but I just... And really coming to admire his tenacity yeah. to be able and resilience to one stay with his faith through highs and lows and to maintain the ministry in which God has given him. Yeah. Because you just don't see longevity anymore. No, nah, and that's one of the things like with my dad as well that I look look up to so much is that with my dad, I mean, um, he was a boiler maker. He yeah, he, yeah, he, he graduated yeah. and a week later he said that he was yeah, he was gone working. And, um, and just seeing like how he has even like worked his way up, but also seeing how he remained faithful through it all, because being honest, like, I mean, that field of work, um, a lot of times isn't the best environment. And like, I mean, people in it, like they know that. Right, <laughs> and absolutely. It's like, I mean, uh, you kind of have to be uh, a little gritty, you have to be tough. And, uh, but just seeing um, the impact that my dad has made like on people's lives that like I, I didn't even know about, right. uh, for instance, even just as a whole, uh, showing that ministry can be done outside of the four walls of a church. Yeah. And showing that, hey, yeah. you don't have to, because for me, I always looked at a pastor or full-time ministry as, well, that's doing God's work. Well, right. And just seeing, though, mm-hmm. that, man, even in that, that you can be doing what God has called you to do and be obedient to what God's telling you to do in that role. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Last question to kind of unravel some of the values and you can kind of see, I hope that even our listeners are seeing, man, these questions are really pulling out yeah. some of the root, I would say just some of the core beliefs that we have within our hearts. Uh, question five, think about a challenge you've experienced in the past. How were you able to get through? What strengths did you exhibit that may have helped you overcome that hard struggle? Mm. I would say um, I go back to the passing of my best friend. Uh, yeah. That was yeah. Uh, one of the toughest things that I dealt with. Um, and so for me, uh, <laughs> it is funny. It, it was being surrounded uh, by my family, but also uh, uh, my youth pastor at the time. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And having him come over and be there for me, um, I'll never forget the day that he was there for me immediately. Um, And so just being surrounded by them and being able to be vulnerable, Mm -hmm. um, being able just to uh, be myself and just show that I was hurting and I didn't have to fake it. I didn't have to act like everything was okay. Um, But during that time, I I would say that um, I grew in my faith I grew, yeah. and that, that's really what yeah. we had talked about a few episodes back. Was mm-hmm. that was really whenever my faith even became my own, in the sense of um, I couldn't, as much as I love my family, I couldn't rely on my family's faith to get me through it. Mm-hmm. And so my faith became my own then, and I, I grew in my faith. And knowing that even whenever I didn't see it or understand it, that God was still in control, and that God was still good in the midst of the bad. Yeah. And so for me, uh, yeah. that's really what I grew in. And um, just remaining faithful. Yeah. Remaining faithful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Uh, we've definitely over the past few years experienced just challenges within our family. And and really it's just been tough questioning a whole lot, kind of understanding, you know, even ask the question why a ton. 
just trying to understand your heart, your you know your different mindsets with it. But how are we able to get through this time with our family? I say we're still getting through it to a point, and really it comes down to man just faith. Yeah, that's a huge part. Just having the faith that God is with us and that God's going to see this thing through. But then the other thing I would say is that man, we've had some incredible people and incredible relationships that have helped us and helped our family yeah. uh, throughout this time. So, yeah, man, it's um, so there we go. Five questions. Identifying some of the values. Brandon Sparks' number one value is 100% family. Oh, I would have guessed that. 100%. But no, looking through it, I mean, I can probably definitely say family is 100% one of mine. I think we would definitely then both relate that our faith is definitely a huge value for us. Relationships in general are a huge value. And then I would say probably one that came out for me that I wasn't expecting is really like this this idea I think came from my father of resilience, yeah. uh, you know, of character. I'm even looking on this list here, if it's even on there. Um, but there's some that would probably fit within that strength. You know, I've seen great strength in my father, yeah. um, you know, the ability to overcome or to, to withstand the test. I mean, there's all sort of resiliency. I think that that's probably the one I've been looking for. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, these are definitely, definitely some, uh, but I really think these questions help. Yeah. Identify some of the values that we have. Yeah. And I think the values that we've talked about over the past 10 weeks are still really relevant Mm -hmm. to us. Yeah. And maybe even some of our top values. But I would say, even for you, love is one of the top ones. Love. Yeah. You talked about how uh, you want your kids to know that, man, you love them. And then you also talk about your uh, Mamma Webb there, how that love that she had for you is just a pure love and a pure heart. And just, I, I see that even in your life that you value true authentic love genuine like yeah. a genuine yeah oh man yeah that's true you got me thinking now appreciate that <laughs> that's good that's good um that's good so next steps for this next steps we've helped you hopefully discover our values and maybe me and you we've been able to work through this was there one that really stuck out to you that you're like i, I wasn't expecting it um i would say obedience like i didn't really like i guess i yeah. never really uh, saw that as a value like that but that is something that like man throughout even being called to the church just being obedient from moving from kcu to more absolutely State and yeah. just being obedient throughout it all i honestly didn't even uh, through all the difficulties exactly. that you still are, you know facing but yeah. still like the obedience through that yeah so that was one that kind of surprised me i didn't think of it and then i saw it on there as i was reading <laughs> so yeah. i'd say yeah absolutely absolutely so Think about those questions, you know, how do they connect with you? What are some values that came to your mind there? And I do encourage you find a list of those values. I mean, you can find a list of values all across the internet, but here's the next step. This is where it gets very practical. Write them down. Yeah. Take the top three to five values, write them down. And then step two, allow your values to soak in. And here's the practice for this. Put them where you can see them. <laughs> Put them where you can see them. Here's a little thought for you. Discrepancies between values and practices, man, they create chaos in a person's life. If you talk your values but then neglect to walk in them, then you will continually undermine your integrity and credibility. Mm. And that's where I think just seeing them and continuing to ingrain them into your mindset will help you then walk them out. And then the last one and the third one, which is the most important, which I think is the, the culmination of this celebrate the day mentality is to choose every day to live by your values. Yep. And I would say, man, the greatest lesson I've learned over this past 10 weeks can be summed up in this one quote here. The tough decisions are the everyday ones. Mm. For example, if good health is one of my values, will I exercise even though I don't feel like it in the morning? Will I refrain from eating a big piece of chocolate cake even though I really want to? To be successful, my values, not my feelings, need to control my actions. So good. It's good stuff, man. So good. Good stuff. Uh, so there we go. Three habits, three things that we can do next. Write them down. Allow your values to soak in and choose every day to live by your values. And last quote for me for this season, by choosing to embrace and practice good values every day, you may not always get what you desire, but you will always be the person you desire to be. So good. Any That's closing so good. remarks, man? man? Season three wrapping up. 
Season two. Season two? Man, you Season three about ahead. to take off. I'm ready for season three. <laughs> yes. But no, it's been uh, an amazing uh, season and super excited just to see uh, what's ahead. But just understand that with these values, you were kind of talking there, um, to be successful, my values, not my feelings, need to control my actions. Man, values are one of those things to where it's like, it's kind of like a crock pot versus fast food. And yeah. sometimes it takes a while. It takes a while to see the end result. It takes a while. You were talking about it at 90 years old. 90 years old, what do you want people to say? Yeah. Man, your values are something that lasts a lifetime. Absolutely. Uh, your feelings don't. Absolutely. And, and uh, so just want to encourage you that, man, these everyday decisions uh, that are tough decisions. Like, it's tough to say no. Uh, it's tough to um, say yes to things that yeah. are hard. Absolutely. However, um, it makes a lifetime of difference, and it matters in the end. So I uh, just want to encourage you with that to, hey, just keep trucking on. That's just right. Keep going. That's keep right. Going. You'll always be the person you decide to be by practicing and putting into place these values. That's right. Put them into place every single day. Mm -hmm. So we'll continue on. Celebrate each and every day as if right. it is a gift. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Monday Mindset, and we'll see you in season three.